Hey everyone, welcome back to Genshin Interact. In today's video, we're actually going to be discussing a new kind of series, if you will, about talking about artifacts. And in today's video specifically, we're going to be looking at some of the Mondstadt artifacts. And before we begin, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. It really helps us out. And if you enjoy a lot of our content, we also do have a Discord that you guys can join if you are interested in that. And that will be in the description down below. Moving right into things, though, in today's video, I'm going to start with the four-piece artifact set, Thundering Fury, and just kind of talking about the two-piece and also the four-piece and what some characters, you know, are going to be good for this set, as well as some two-piece options for other characters. But looking right at the set, its two-piece set is Electro Damage Bonus of 15%, so that's just generally good for basically any Electro Damage dealers you might have on your account that's going to help them deal a little bit extra damage. And then looking at the four piece, it states that it will increase damage caused by the overloaded reaction, electrocharged, superconduct, and hyperbloom by 40%. And also it will increase the damage bonus given by aggravate by 20%. So again, this is going to be helpful for a lot of electro related reactions, really increasing the damage that your electro characters can do. Also note that when the quicken or any of those elemental reactions are triggered, your elemental skill cooldown will be decreased by one second, and this can occur every 0.8 seconds. So especially on characters like Sino or Catching, you're going to be able to decrease their cooldowns on their skills. And I know this is really good for Sino. A lot of people will tell you a lot of Sino mains um, because you can use his skill while in his burst several times more than usual had you not used this set. Some people like to go gilded because that is actually his signature set kind of made for him but you can also use this set on him just because of that reason getting a lot of extra skill hits in for a lot of extra damage per rotation and some other characters you could probably run this on for the four piece not a lot actually come to my, my mind besides catching and sino specifically but i have heard people doing aggravate raiden that isn't something i'd personally recommend but i know it is an option so there is something there, but the big takeaway with Thundering Fury, in my personal opinion, is not that you're just getting a lot of extra electro damage, but the fact that you get that elemental skill cooldown decrease. And so when you throw it on someone like Raiden or other electro characters with long skill cooldowns, it doesn't really matter that you do decrease their cooldown because it's already so long in the first place. Whereas someone like Sino or Catching have having that kind of you know, very short cooldown, especially Sino in the burst, but in catching is only being like, I think like six or seven seconds. It does help for certain combos that you, you know, chain with using bursts and skills and normal attacks. So it is something to think about there. Um, there is also a case for Yaimiko, but once again, they're usually just better options to go with. You either can just do a four piece gilded, um, and before Sumeru released, a lot of people do, and still do, just two-piece attack percent sets, and also using the two-piece of Thundering Fury. So that is one thing you could do. And if you have just really good pieces, and you happen to have a full four-piece set, that does work. So I'm not going to say it doesn't work, but I do think just doing four-piece gilded or two-piece mix match is a little bit better for Yaimiko. Looking on to the next set, which is Thunder Soother, this two-piece set gives you an electro resistance increase by 40%. And its four-piece set increases damage against enemies affected by Electro by 35%. This set, I think, has been one of the sets that has kind of just fallen off the face of the earth. Not a lot of people really used it in the beginning of the game. And maybe they kind of did, maybe with someone like Lisa or whatever, considering she was free. And if you had catching, you know, at some point, whenever she came out, she had, a, you know, an original banner and then she was thrown onto the perma banner. But I think some characters could have used this early on in the game. But I think looking just even at Thunder Fury as well as plenty of other um, different types of things that have come out in the past, I think this set has just kind of fallen to the wayside. And I think rightfully so. The two-piece set isn't really necessary. A lot of the times some four-piece sets or just in general some sets can be very useful for their two-piece like Rift was just talking about with Thundering Fury. The problem with this one is that the two-piece set just increases your electro resistance which is great if you're really worried about getting smacked in the face by you know an enemy but at the end of the day you're going to want to use your artifacts to increase your damage output before basically you get hit or increase your support ability if you are a support or your healing bonus or all these other things so the electro resistance increase at least for now doesn't seem to have too crazy of a help for you the four piece set is probably what most people would throw on a character 
even looking at some different types of characters that might be able to use it, but it increases damage against enemies affected by Electro by 35%. So if you have a full Electro team and you're trying to throw that out, I think it could be a, a good idea to maybe throw this together if you have the four-piece set and you don't have too many other sets. But I wouldn't necessarily say to really go after this set, especially just because there are better sets out there considering looking at Thundering Fury as well as a bunch of other sets that are in different regions if you're trying to just increase your damage for your Electro uh, DPS, which I think what this is what this character would be used the most for. Rift, I don't know if you have anything else to really say about this set. There's not too, too much really going on here for me. Yeah, it is just like you said, with it being such a, you know... With, again, with the two-piece, really, not really being able to do anything for your damage, you might as well just use healers and supports, you know, and build them to do what they can do. So the two-piece here, you know, thinking about putting this on a damage character, it's like, well, that's not damage, so why do I want that, right? And so I think it, you know, you said it well already, but with the four-piece, uh, I know, you know, you did mention Lisa, and I also thought of Yaimiko, you know, just being Electro Catalyst, you know, and the, just dealing a lot of good Electro damage consistently. It can also be good for Dendro teams when you're just going full Aggravate and Spread, mainly on the Aggravate side uh, with Dendro supports primarily. You can get a lot of Electro Aura on the enemy to where they basically are always afflicted with that Electro. So it can be good there. And once again, it's not a bad option. Say you're already farming the domain for Thundering Fury because you want to build your Catching or your Sino on those sets. You're obviously going to get a lot of pieces of Thunder Soother, and let's assume you get some really good pieces. You get the right main stats. You get some damage bonus goblets with really good substats. Those are things you should keep because you can use them as fifth pieces too. But also, even if you are getting a lot of these pieces and you kind of you see on your account that you have a lot of thunder soother pieces but they're all really good you can use the four piece it's going to be really good um for lisa and yaimiko um as an alternative because that's also resin efficient if you know you have a good thunder soother four piece then why waste a thousand two thousand resin on gilded for lisa or anything else that you would do for lisa or, or even yaimiko unless you're really just wanting to go high investment in Yaimiko. Yaimiko would make more sense because she is a five star and maybe you pulled her weapon. Then yeah, go all out and build, you know, min max everything cuz that would make sense. Um but I think it is resin efficient to just, you know, not do the domain because Thunder Soother isn't really the best in slot for anyone and it's better to just use your two piece gladiator uh two piece any other attack percents you might have already on characters like Lisa and Yaimiko so that you can spend all of your resin on more efficient domains like, you know, Emblem Domain in Inazuma. And there's a lot of other domains that could go on with that. But that that's just my take on Thunder Soother. So I think we can look at the next one. The next artifact we're going to be looking at is the Viridescent Venomer set. Now, this set is one of those sets that is probably the most, I don't know, resin efficient is the, is the correct thing to say, just because Maiden isn't used a lot on a, a lot of characters. I mean, it used to more in the beginning of the game, but now it's you're either using the new set, Song of Days Past, or even some people use Ocean Hued Clam, There's No Bless Oblige. A lot of other sets you can run on healers, typically, because you don't always necessarily need the full healing builds. So there's a lot of options you can do. But looking at Viridescent, a really fantastic set, almost always considered to be the you need to use when you have animo characters. Um, and there's a lot of reason for that. First off, not just the damage bonus on the two-piece, but really the four-piece increasing your swirl damage by 60%. That's a very good increase of damage, but that's not even the reason. Decreasing elemental resistance to the element infused in the swirl by 40% for 10 seconds is really the takeaway of why Viridescent is so good. And so that's why where any video you go to, even videos that are two years old, they'll tell you, you know, with Venti, you need to use four piece viridescent. Now, and that's assuming you're maybe not going to damage build it. But even if you are going to damage build on Venti, viridescent, I still think personally is what I would do because I am getting that animo damage bonus and I am getting swirl damage bonus by a lot. But I'm also increasing off fielders damage too. And so you can use this set on Hazo, even though yes, he's a DPS. Why why should I do this when there's Desert Pavilion? Well, yeah, there's Desert Pavilion, but what if you want your off-fielders to also deal more damage? So that's something to think about. But um, there's just so many animo characters you can use this on. And 
Vixen, like, what are some examples of characters you've probably built on Viridescent? Well, originally, like you were talking about with my Hazo, I threw him on a four-piece Viridescent at first just because of the increase in swirl damage, so that was a good thing, as well as, like you were talking about, he was swirling constantly, and that was helping my characters off-field if I was throwing Zing Cho on the team or someone like Shang Ling. You know, that helped a lot with the damage from the off-field as well as, you know, uh, even though I have my Hazel at C6 and I've built him very well, his damage output isn't obviously as consistent as a 5-star, so these types of things kind of helped out a little bit more. I've switched him to a different build, but looking here for these other characters, like for instance Kazuha is probably the first thing that everybody thinks of, just because of he already helps so much with his kit and buffing because of swirling. You know, he's got a passive talent that helps out a lot. He goes heavy into elemental mastery, so it makes even more sense to go into the swirl damage 4-piece that he gets with a little bit of the animo damage bonus he gets in the 2 Two piece plus obviously just in general he gives a, a damage bonus uh to whatever element he swirls in his passive talent based on his elemental mastery here it decreases the opponent's elemental resistance to that element so he's basically increasing your damage by a hundred percent just because of what you're doing with him so he's a solid pick and obviously you were talking about venti the animal archon so it makes most sense as well as he is going to be using probably this set like you were talking about more or less as it off fielder more like a support Jean's another good character uh, especially in the fontaine era that we're in now and her being extremely extremely well and doing well with characters like farina that's another good character to use but I've talked a lot about five stars and, you know, the four star with Hazo, but I know a character that you especially like Rift is actually Sucrose. That's and right, Sucrose yep. can use this well as well. You know, a lot of people who don't have Kazuha yet, I know you used Sucrose as well during that off period time as well when you didn't have Kazuha. So mm -hmm. having Sucrose on this four piece set can just help her be a really good character for your team as well. And I know that she's a really good battery. So I think just in general, the Viridescent Domain, as much as it isn't necessarily resident efficient because we're going to talk about Maiden Beloved in a second, but I think it's going to be really good to just have this domain in general, just grabbing as many pieces as you can for this. It helps so many different animal characters, it's not even funny. I totally agree with that, but uh, we are going to look at Maiden's Beloved now, which is the other artifact that comes in the same domain as Viridescent. So looking right at this, um, we kind of already touched on it while talking about Viridescent. Uh, but the two-piece increases your character healing effectiveness by 15%, or your healing bonus, basically. And then the four-piece uh, says that when you use an elemental skill or burst, um, it will increase the healing received by all of your party members by 20% for 10 seconds. So once again, it focuses heavily on just healing. There's no extra damage, nothing of that sort. It's all about increasing the healing potential of your healer. So with that said... It can be a good two-piece for any of your healers that you would just want to see a little bit more healing out of. Um, but I just think, especially with the state of the game now and us being in Fontaine, there are so many four-piece artifact sets out there that you could just use instead of going for full healing builds. As long as you have your main stats of whether it be HP or attack, whatever the healer scales on, if you've got your main pieces and you've got decent substats, even me mediocre pieces, your healers are going to heal pretty well when they're level 80. You have a, at least a level 80 weapon. The artifacts are leveled, especially the flower, just because it's a you know the HP piece of all the artifacts. Your healer is going to do their job, whether or not they're insanely built or half built, right? So it's not too, too important to try to worry about min-maxing sets like this, especially because it is for a support character anyways. I think you'll progress more in the game by hyper building, if you will, or min maxing your damage dealers. Your supports just need the right sets and the right main stats, at least, and they'll do their job as expected. But what other thoughts, Vixen, do you have about this set? Nothing really too much. I think that at the end of the day, this set can help a lot with the healing, and that's great. But I think that there are a lot of other sets that are very, very good. Never mind you talking about the Song of Days Past and uh, the other uh, set that Chi Chi uses, but you know, in general, Four Piece Tenacity and Four Piece Noblesse, which are going to be in the Leeway video, are already really, really good sets as well that a lot of healers and a lot of supports specifically are going to be using. So this set does kind of fall off. But looking beyond uh, this domain, we have one last domain in Mondstadt, which you can find in the Dragon Spine area. We're going to be combining uh, these smaller areas, I guess, and we'll be putting the Chasm in the Leeway video as well. So probably keep that just a little bit in mind. But 
Looking at Blizzard Strayer, the two-piece set increases cryo damage bonus by 15%, which is very nice for cryo damage dealers, and four-piece set states that when a character attacks an opponent affected by cryo, their crit rate is increased by 20%, and if the opponent is frozen, the, the crit rate is increased by another 20%, which means that if they are a frozen enemy, you can get up to 40% crit rate when you attack an enemy that is frozen. So looking specifically at this set, I think there are obviously the biggest person that comes into mind is going to be Ayaka. Having the cryo damage bonus set is really, really, or the two piece is really, really nice, but that four piece allows you to go heavily into crit damage so that you don't really have to focus too, too much on crit rate. You start out at 5%, and if you get maybe 20% from your substats, not even talking about a circlet, you're at 25%, let's say. If you then get 40% on frozen enemies, um, you're now going up 25 plus 40 is 65 and now you have a lot an easier chance to put uh, a crit damage circlet as well as Ayaka's weapon as crit damage. You know, even talking about characters like Chong Yun is another really good character that, especially for early game players, can really use. Chong Yun's really, really nice to use with this as well, considering his skill can give him a cryo infusion, so he'll always be hitting and he uses normal attack, so he can work really well with Zing Cho, very much like Ayaka. I think this set is probably just one of the best almost, and it's got an okay um, other side of it. So I think this domain's pretty resin efficient as well. But Rift, what do you think about the Blizzard domain, or at least this set? Oh yeah, I as far as the domain as a whole, it's a great set because both, or it's a great domain because both sets are are pretty decent. Uh, Blizzard with the cryo damage, it's you can use on any you know cryo damage dealers that you have. You can I am um, use this on Kaya. You can use it on Rosaria. Um, any other damage dealers you're going for cryo, you could even use it on a Shenna if you're going for damage in Shenna's burst or her skill. You know, there's things you can do there, but it really, the four piece is just so good. It It's on par with Marsh Jose set because the Marsh Jose set is about giving a lot of crit rate so that you don't have to run a crit rate weapon or even a crit rate circlet. You can focus on that crit damage, much like you were saying already. There's just so much value there that it's just really good. And this is why a lot of people will go freeze teams with Ayaka and even some other cryo characters uh, like Kaya and Rosaria. But looking at the next set, we're going to, and it's actually the last set in today's video, it, but it's on the other side of the Blizzard domain, and which is why I think this domain is really good to go after because this is Heart of Death, and this gives you in the two-piece Hydro Damage bonus of 15%, and in the four-piece, it states that after you use an elemental skill, it will increase your normal and charged attack damage by 30% for 15 seconds. So right off the bat there, that's a good uptime of 15 seconds. Most any DPS, you're not going to be on the field for more than 15 seconds. So you're getting full uptime there. Um, this was child set when he released, and this set was designed for him. It And it obviously makes sense. And I even think till this day, you know, we have things like Nymph Stream. There is four-piece glad you could do, uh, mainly thinking about Ayato there. Um, and there's, there are some other alternatives for building a typical Hydro DPS. But this set is still on par. And yes, it might be worse by just a fraction or a margin of percent, you could say. We're no theory crafters, so we don't, you know, we don't go heavy into that stuff. But it is definitely, definitely viable to use this set on Child, Ayato, even Candace, if you're going Candace DPS, Nilu built as a Hydro DPS as opposed to her Bloom build. I think this set does that all for you. So that's already four characters that this set really works well on. Not to mention on the other side of the domain, uh, Blizzard Strayer. So it's a very efficient domain. I don't think you can waste resin on this domain at all because the two piece you can obviously use as well interchangeably with getting just extra Hydro damage. You can use that on Yelon. Yeah, because I wouldn't use the four piece here for Yelon just because you don't use normal and charged attacks too much with the Yelon. So you're missing out there. But if you do, I know people do two piece Hydro damage with the Heart of Depth and two piece HP with something like Tenacity or Vorakasha's Glow. So there's definitely a lot of options. Really, at the end of the day, just a great domain to throw your resin into. Um, what other thoughts did you have about this set? Well, I think at the end of the day, yeah, it's really good for Hydro characters. I think specifically, it's, you know, just in general, really good. I do like the idea of bringing up Candace. You know, a lot of four-star characters that people are going to be having instead of the five stars. And so I think it's even something I know she gets an infusion, I believe, from her burst. You can just pop your skill either right before or right after that. So then you can kind of just give herself an infusion that can kind of just help her 
increase her normal charge attack damage by 30%, which is really, really good. Maybe throw on a Vaporizer or some sort with some other mm -hmm. characters like Shang Ling, sure. which you get free from the Abyss. So I think, obviously, Child, an amazing character to have this on. Obviously, it's going to be his own personal set, as well as Nim's Dream is very good, but we'll talk about that one later. I think, just in general, a really, really good domain for people to really be looking at for this specific set. But I don't think we have too, too much else to really talk about besides that. Remember, we do have a Discord uh, to go ahead and check out if you guys really want to. Make sure to like and subscribe because that does help us out so that you guys can see more content as well. So besides that, I think that's all we got for today. So we'll see you in the next one.